So we assemble ourselves here at this appointed time. For we enter into thy gates with thanksgiving into thy courts with praise. Because you have kept us all week long, O oh God. No hurt, harm, or danger came upon us. And for this we say thank you. When we woke up this morning, we had the activities of our lives. And for this, we say thank you. We made it up to the house of worship one more time. For this, we say thank you. We thank you, oh God, because as we look back over our lives, and as we think things your grace and mercy has kept us and has sustained us. And for this, we just say thank you. And we pray, oh God, we stand in the gap for those who cannot pray or who are unable to pray for themselves. But we got some friends and some loved ones who may have strayed away from the awesome power. They're taking their eyes off the Christ, off the cross. We've got some friends and some loved ones who are addicted to all kinds of drugs and behavior. We got some friends and some loved ones who, who woke up in strange places on this morning. We got some friends and some loved ones who found themselves lying in their own moments of depression, fear, doubt. So we're praying for them right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for this place called Plymouth Congregation of the United Church of Christ. We have been on the wall of watching women and men for a long time trying to bring about justice to sometimes an unjust work. We pray for each member that they stay healthy. We speak into the universe and we understand that by our stripes we are healed. We pray for our pastor and all that you have placed him here to do. Keep him healthy and keep him strong, oh God, and continue to give him vision. I mean vision that is so big, we sometimes may question it, but we have no other medicine than to follow. We pray for the financial help of this church. For you know us, God, many of us are disciplined in our giving, and so we give so that we can continue to improve the life of this community, this city, and pray for our country. We pray for the leadership. We pray for those who we need to find this day. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you go and prick their hearts and let them know, O oh God, that at the end of the day, all that matters is the love that we demonstrate. Because the only proof we have that you are still living is the love that we create. We ask right now in the name of Jesus. We got some folk who are in convalescent homes, some people who are in the hospitals, some people, oh God, who are on their bed of affliction. And right now, we intercede on their behalf, knowing full well that you are the great deliverer. Deliver them from whatever they need to be delivered. Sometimes, oh God, in the recesses of our minds, there are moments that we want to cry out. We ask, oh God, that you hear our cry and grant us our wish. But there's not a friend like you, God. Not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No one else can heal 
say amen. amen. Denise 
A. B. Wald, and it's entitled, A Heart Much Like My Own. Dear friend, I'm at the gate of prayer right now, this very hour, petitioning our God of love to touch you with his power, to show his grace and love anew at this time in your life, a fresh a heart much like my own. Thank you and
everyone. Good morning. Um, as, as some of you may know, every year we've been doing a financial fast for the last few years, and we are doing it again this year, and it'll be based on Michelle Singletary's book, The 21-Day Financial Fast. Um, we do this during Lent, so the first day of the fast will be on Ash Wednesday, and you will find more information in your bulletin. I'll be available after service if you have any questions. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. And also, we are having our Ash Wednesday service here on 12 noon on Wednesday, uh, where there will be communion and distribution of ashes. And Flock holds a recept uh, reception just prior to that service at noon and after that service at noon. Flock is for the love of Christ's kingdom and since the one of the Coordinating that. Uh, and so you're being asked for those who are able to make contributions to the flocks so they can supply that reception in a proper and fitting fashion. Your donations would be accepted. You could put flock, F O C, F O C, F L O C K in the middle. Uh, so uh, please uh, do that. Also, I um, want to just give thanks to God for being able to see another birthday. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I give thanks to God for all the sneaky people in the church. <laughs> and the sneaky people in the church that nobody agreed to work about it. And, 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 and I got I to tell you that I was truly tricked. Uh, and uh, I was, uh, my friend told me she was taking me out to dinner, so I got fixated on running her credit card up. So I was looking for <laughs> the best restaurant I could possibly go to. But I was focused on that restaurant. And as we went out, she said, uh, uh, I gotta drop something off to Julianne's house. And I said, okay. Stopped there, it was raining, I remember it was drizzling. And, uh, and so uh, I, I, she, I said to her, I said, well, I'll be right here in the car, right? It was cold outside, right? And, and she said, well, you need to come with me. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm comfortable here. You're only gonna be about five minutes, right? And, 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 and then my friend said uh, that uh, Julianne actually had a present for me and that I needed to go in there and pick it up. And so I'm still focused on the restaurant, thinking nothing of what possibly could be going on. And rang the doorbell and Julianne comes to the door in a house coat and, and a shower cap. And, and I said to myself, the system already ready to go to bed, right? And, so, and that's when the lights come on and I see all these faces looking at me totally shocked and surprised, and I thank God for being shocked and surprised, uh, uh, for being able to celebrate that in such great reverie and rejoice. And thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> As Wednesday, 12 noon, and then the next day is what? The beginning of our Lenten study series. We're coming into the middle, we're coming into Lent. And on Thursday night, we have our uh, Lenten series starting with supper at 6 p.m. going into service at 7. And to kick off our services this year, we have uh, Reverend uh, William Lamar IV, who is the senior pastor of Metropolitan Ailey Church, and he's come with choirs and singing groups, and so we will be blessed in that service to come and, 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 and be here and, and, and let Plymouth be seen uh, as we celebrate. I made uh, a point of making sure that in the six weeks of that, we have three male preachers and three female preachers, amen? Uh, just a bounce and out, keep it balanced, mixed up. And so we have uh, people like, uh, you heard, Reverend uh, Lamar uh, from West Palm Baptist Church. And also, we have Jimmy Hawkins, Reverend Jimmy Hawkins, who is the uh, director of, uh, of, of, of social justice for the Presbyterian Church in USA. Amen. Uh, he's going to be one of our speakers as well. He got locked up with me along, along with Reverend Lamar for a while. So uh, I can call in that famous as we were jailbirds together. Uh, and, but we're also going to have Reverend Amanda Poppy from the Ethical Society, the lead pastor of the Ethical Society, and Reverend Wanda Thompson, ambassador uh, from uh, pastor of Ambassador Baptist Church, Reverend Pat Fields, pastor of Fellowship this church, so it's going to be a great and wonderful time to be able to be here together and go through this theme that is before us, and the theme that is before us is possessing nothing and having everything. Possessing nothing and having everything. So come and grow in that service. 
Uh, also, I want to remind you about Wednesday 6 a.m. prayer call uh, as we gather on the line and pray for the church and pray for our community and pray for our country, pray for our world, pray for each other. You're invited to be a part of that. The protocol to get on that line is listed in your bulletin. So uh, we invite you to be a part of that call. Also, uh, coming up on the 19th of March at 7 p.m., uh, we, we, we have a program called Marching to Freedom. Marching to Freedom. And one of the organizers of the March to Freedom that came out of Gaza uh, is, will be here to speak. One of those organizers. If you remember, you probably saw some of this, but the, really the, the news is not very good at covering the news, if you know what I'm saying. It's all, it's all, info, it's all infotainment, right? Uh, and, it's, uh, and, it's, it, and it's Trump men that takes place if you don't have uh, uh, news. But, but one of the things was that the young folks in Gaza said, what if we just march and return back to our ancestral villages? And they started marching out of Gaza. And they were met with severe and brutal force by the Israeli military. And they marched the next day. And they were met with brutal force by the Israeli military. And they marched the next day. And they have continued to, to march and stand up. And so that would be Brother Ahmed Abu uh, Atimo, who will be one of the speakers <coughs> here, along with Jewish Voice for Peace, and Cold Pink, and other. And it's an opportunity to really learn about what's going on from uh, someone who has lived through it and is living through it, 7 p.m. on March the 19th. I also want to recognize and give thanks to Dr. Ron Fraser. Anybody understand, Ron? Ron's new book is out. Uh, Pauline Hopkins, an advocacy journalist. And uh, so we give thanks for this having such a scholar like uh, Dr. Fraser in our midst. And the last, I think the last uh, uh, Sunday, right, of this month, He's going to do a reading of this book and questions, and also we invite you to be around to, uh, uh, to uh, hear uh, uh, what uh, Dr. Fraser uh, is going to tell us about. Because really when you come down to, to, to this is that uh, this is one of the advocates around the uh, uh, Haitian Revolution, uh, and, uh, and so it's a very important figure. And as you know, very often in the history books, our story is not told. Even when it claims to be told, it is not told. Oh, yeah. And so it takes scholars and it takes folks like, like Dr. Fraser and others who continue to write about moments in history, people in history, times in history, the flow of history that we need to be attuned to. So I invite you to be a part of that. And we will make sure that a proper notice gets out, uh, Dr. Fraser. So uh, we'll, we'll work on that together. All right. So thank you. Congratulations again. Amen. It's now that time to bring our tithes, our gifts, our offering into God's house. Uh, for the Lord has blessed us, is blessing us right now. We're reminded that our proper time is 10%. It's not very much when you consider all that God has done. Oh, yeah. And you know what? We recognize that some people can do 10%, some people not there yet. But also some people can do more than 10%. But that's a part of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. For those who do less, it's made up by those who do more. And it all works out for the good, yeah. we're reminded. So that's a part of folk pulling together and being the family of God together. And we're able to go where we could not go by ourselves. We go there by the community. We go there by the support of one another. I give praise to God today for being blessed with each of you and your faithfulness, and God is appreciative of all the gifts and tithes that you have given for the service and the ministry of Jesus Christ. I'm going to invite our trustees to come forward at this point. And Sister Cooper, just in case you might know, you just stand for a minute, because Sister Juanita Cooper has been coordinating for the love of Christ's kingdom, which is going to do the reception uh, during Ash Wednesday uh, service before and service, and so if you have a contribution to see her so that she can uh, buy the, the proper uh, items for the repast. Amen. Thank you.
the children of our church. We have both grown and growing. Lord, we ask that you anoint each and every one of the people sitting here today so that they may fulfill their life purpose. Father, we know that you have infused us with gifts, skills, and abilities, and so we ask for opportunities to demonstrate all that you have placed inside us. Father, these are the things that we pray today and every day in Jesus' name. today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verses 29 through 35, in our pew Bibles that can be found on page 77. The writer talks about the experience of Moses on the mountaintop, and it sounds like this. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of the testimony in his hand, As he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. And when Aaron and all of the people of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them and Aaron, and all of the leaders of the congregation returned to him. And Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And when he came out, and told the people of Israel what he was commanded, the people of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses would put the veil back on his face again until he went in to speak with him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word.
to God for the talent of Reverend Kenneth King. Um, I sent up a prayer a while ago and they sent the church Reverend King. Amen. So we give thanks for you just coming and just allowing the Lord to use you. And I give thanks for Reverend Julianne Robertson again coming to bless us and and just keep us filled and Reverend Jeremiah Murphy Amen <laughs> Praise the Lord uh, He gives praise to God We know he does and he plays like he gives praise to God And we're just thankful for, for you I want to thank uh, all the choir that's here and Brother McKenzie I want to also remind us that As Lenten starts there are Lenten gleaners and you can pick up your Lenten gleaner from the ushers in the narthex as you leave the church. And so uh, we just urge that you pick one up. Also, in terms of announcements, uh, uh, the, the drywallers are almost finished with putting all the drywall up. Almost finished. They've been moving crazy fast this week. Uh, and uh, and want to thank the trustees for just continuing to bird dog that and to watch that and to make sure that things move forth in a, uh, a expeditious kind of fashion, a fashion from here. So we're making our journey towards that place where uh, soon we will um, uh, be able to have our entire facility back. But also I wanted to express this because there's one thing that's been going on and that is that a number of the groups and organizations and, uh, in the city uh, have been displaced because of gentrification. Uh, organizations and entities that's been functioning for years and 
Uh, a number of them, uh, at least a couple, one of them has recited themselves here at Plymouth Church. It's called The Sanctuaries, and it's an art collective, a spiritual art collective. It does tremendous things, all during the Poor People's Campaign. There were these banners stretched across whatever church we were at, and, and those banners came out of the sanctuaries as they put those banners together for the Poor People's Campaign and other types of things. The other thing, a uh, group that has uh, approached us is another group called Many uh, Languages, One Voice, which is a group of uh, dreamers, of colored dreamers from Africa and as well as Latin America. So we're having some conversations with them as well. Reverend Kenneth King is also uh, looking at moving his congregation here to be with us. Isn't that right, Reverend King? Amen. Amen. And so, uh, uh, so you know, uh, what I'm pointing out is that there's some tremendous things that's going on uh, that we don't even sometimes see until it happens. And I'm just giving praise and thanks to God because God is providing in terms of, uh, in terms of resources as well as energy uh, and strength and renewed energy. And so I'm, 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 I'm looking at it this way. I can't wait to see what the Lord going to do. I can't wait to see what the Lord is going to do. For God is already doing it and has done it. So praise the Lord. I also want to recognize uh, Brother Rustafik, uh, who's here. Uh, Rustafik, raise your hand. His, his parents were members of, long-term members of this church. And I think we're deacons in this church, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the Daniels family. And, hmm? Yes, right. That's right. So uh, just raise your hand. If y'all don't know him, some of y'all know him and some of y'all know his family. And it was just good to have you here today with us and uh, give thanks to God. And, 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 and our, our sister who's back here with us, amen. Haven't seen you in a little while, but it's good to have you here today and to bless us with your smiling, lovely face. Thank you so much. Praise God for you. Uh, I want to invite you to join me in a moment of prayer this morning. Let us pray, Lord. We just thank you for this word that is open to us and for us, Lord. And we ask that you give us the ability not only to read it, but to perceive what it is saying to us in this hour in which we live, these moments and days in which we stand. For one thing is always certain, Lord. And that is that you are the potter and we are the clay, so mold us as you would have us to be until we are fitted for your kingdom and able to call ourselves disciples of Jesus Christ. Now as we come to this teaching moment, Lord, you hone it, you shape it, you develop it, you send it forth as you see fit. Allow it all to be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I want to take a few moments and speak on the subject, the reflection of God. The reflection of God. There was a folk song composed in 1957 by a British singer-songwriter, Ewan McCall. That song went through several metamorphoses. It entered the music scene in the 60s through groups like the Kingston Trio in 1962, then Peter, Paul, and Mary, I know I'm dating myself, the Brothers Four and the uh, Chad Mitchell Trio, and then Gordon Lightfoot in 1966. Then there was a singer that came to know the song through a 1963 release of that song by a folk duo, duo called, named Joe and Eddie. This particular singer was moved by the lyrics and the rhythm of the song so that she taught the song to a girls glee club at Banneker High School here in Washington, D.C. This singer sang the song at Mr. Henry's nightclub on Pennsylvania Avenue. It was part of her routine. It was part of her set. And in 1972, this same singer, Roberta Flack, slowed the song down and sang the words in a sultry, moving tone that reached into the swaying of our bodies and the depths of our soul. She sang, the first time ever I saw your face. I thought the sun rose in your eyes and the moon and the stars were the gifts you gave to the dark and the endless sky. McCall wrote the song as a love song in 1957, and yet that song lives, and people have dated 
and loved to that song. They have wept with that song and danced to that song. We understand not only the music, but the sentiment. As I think of that, I I realize that we have the experience of looking into faces and seeing emotions. Sorrows, joys, sadness, giddiness, caution, anger, love, adoration, surprise, shock, and nervousness. There are all kinds of expressions that are shown on a person's face. This is where people talk about having a poker face, and that is a face that's strange to be blank, not to show expressions of any kind, and not to present a tell. A tell, as you know, is a twitch, a a tick, a movement that a person does habitually that demonstrates something that they are trying to conceal. The first time I ever saw your face. We had an impression. We drew some assumptions and someone formed some kind of opinion and in some cases those opinions remained. In other words, someone formed an opinion about you looking into your eyes and at your face. The first time I ever saw your face. Cultural biases and prejudices are propagated for reasons of power, control, fears, and exploitation. When this person that calls himself a president stereotyped Mexicans and Muslims and immigrants and insulted Africans and African nations by referring to them as sugar, honey, iced tea countries, it was to feed racist elements with the most inflammatory kind of stereotyping. When we see on TV the black criminal, the loud, sassy, and threatening black person, the grinning Latinx with a leaf blower, the drug kingpin from Latin America, these are all stereotypes that form messages to and for all the others in this country that do not have an experience with someone who is different. When you think about America, you you really got to understand that America is not what we see in the DMV. America consists of hamlets and villages where people don't even know anybody who's different than themselves. People do not know anyone that speaks a language other than American, as they would call it. You know, folks live in an insular world, and therefore they easily can fall into stereotypes, the stuff that is portrayed by the media and bombards their senses and therefore conditions them into all of the misinformation and prejudices that come with that. Stephen Clark was killed in his grandmother's backyard by Sacramento police who were looking for a burglary suspect and Clark being black filled the bill. Or think about Congresswoman Ilhan Omar who recently came under attack for stating that the interests of Israel by many in Congress are being put before the concerns and the interests of those living in the United States and her factual statements got her labeled anti-Semitic. This lady, Somalian in background, wearing her hijab, was targeted in a poster just recently in the West Virginia legislature linking her with 9-11. An article in the Washington Post states it this way, quote, the poster at a table in the Capitol's rotunda featured an image of freshman representative Ilhan Omar, Democrat, Minnesota, underneath one of New York's twin towers burning. Quote, it said, never forget, you said, read the text placed over the photo of the World Trade Center. Quote, I am the proof you have forgotten, unquote. Read the caption over Omar's image. Omar, one of the first two Muslim congresswomen ever elected has been the target of Islamophobia smears since she took office this year. Even Jesus was stereotyped. When when, When some looked at his face, they didn't see a Messiah, they didn't 
even see a teacher. But when many looked into his face, they saw a troublemaker, an agitator, and a revolutionary. And those, all those things were revealed in the Palestinian face of Jesus. Even in the Gospel of John, verse 1, verses 45 to 46, it reads, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Stereotypes and racism are being deliberately advanced in this country. And people want for us to be afraid when we see the face of another. Largely these stereotypes keep people fearful of each other. And any huckster who comes along and feeds these fears is usually doing so to feed him or herself economically and power wise. So when people look into your face, what do they see? What do they see in your eyes and in your face? Some people look upon a dark face and are frightened because they have been taught that blackness means evil and criminality and brutality and anger. When people look into your face, what do they see? Do they see a kind person or a good person? What does a kind or good person look like, I wonder? The first time I ever saw your face. What did I see and what do we see in the face and in the eyes of those around us and those that we come across on a daily basis? Do we see weariness and franticness and confusion in the face of the people we meet? What do we see in another's face? As I was praying and working on this text, an image came back to me of my mother. My mother who was the absolute pro at psyching me out. <laughs> and, and, and what I mean by that, she would ask a question. And she would say, Sister McDaniel, don't you lie. She says, because I can tell the way you hold your eyes and the way your mouth moves, whether you're lying or not. And of course, I'm telling a lie, and I'm trying to get over with that lie, so I'm moving my mouth, trying to get it right so that she wouldn't notice and place my eyes in the right place. So I'm sitting up there contorting and wonder why she figured out that I was lying. <laughs> you know, that, that she, she, she was able to look into my face, into my eyes, that way my mouth was set to know that I wasn't telling the truth. My mother was a pro at psyching me out. So what do we see in the faces of others and in their eyes? Now, as we read in the text today, Moses came down the mountain after being in the presence of God, and his face was aglow. His face was so illuminated that after he finished sharing the commandment, they would put a veil on his face. When Moses went back up again to speak to God and receive the commandments, he took the veil off because he did not want anything to separate him from the presence of the divine. Moses was reflecting the brilliance of God. Moses was reflecting the light of God and his face shined so brightly that they needed to cover his face. The light in his face and the radiance of that reflected from his face was a sign that Moses had been in the presence of God. It was also a sign that God's presence radiated from Moses and the light of the Lord was upon him. What prevents God's presence from radiating in you? Have you been in the presence of the Lord lately? Have you been in the presence of God? And if you've been in the presence of God, does it show? You see, we often want to read the text and read about how God had an effect upon Moses. That, 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 That story is there for us to understand that if God had an effect upon Moses, God should have an effect upon us. 
that when folk look at us, they should see a reflection of the light of God. When folks look into our eyes, they should see the, the reflection of God coming through our being. So it's not just about Moses, and we make this mistake all the time. We read the text, and we know the story, and therefore we say, oh, Moses was in the presence of God. Well, the story is there because you, too, are in the presence of God, and God's presence should have an impact on your life. So how do you get to be in the presence of God? How do you get there? Well, I want to submit that God is all around, and we need to focus and refocus to see the presence of the Lord. We often look for God in the wrong places and in the wrong forms. But our Lord is in the formation of the clouds, for example, or the chirp of a bird or the tender drop of rain or the intricate construction of a snowflake, maybe the way a leaf falls to the ground in the fall or maybe the way the spring awakens the plants and they begin to bust forth and blooms and blossom. I see God in the daffodils that are trying to come up in my yard. The presence of God is discovered in a kind word and a kind act, making someone smile or learning how to rejoice in somebody else's smile. I've seen God in the many faces surrounding me, the faces of youth and the faces of those who are older, the faces of immigrants, whether they're documented or undocumented, the faces of Africans, some who have come seeking political asylum and some who have just come in terms of immigration. I've seen God in my sisters and brothers. I've seen God in somebody doing a kind act, just even offering a cold glass of water or somebody saying a kind word just when you needed to hear some words from somebody that lifted you up. I've seen the presence of God. You see, God permeates the construction of our existence. On Moses' face was the reflection of God. On his face was blinding light, the wisdom we find in knowing God, walking in his ways, doing her will is truly a light cast on our pathways. Yes, I deliberately said her will or his will. God is spirit, male and female. I was nurtured by the face of God in my mother. Amen. God is in our midst, and often we bring the light into the midst of the people, just as Moses brought the light into the midst of the people. The writer Victor Hugo said, to love another person is to see the face of God. If we believe Victor Hugo, then the light of the Lord is in acts of love, mercy and caring that is received and offered to others. And as I think about that, I realize that cloudy faces have a difficult time sharing love. Contorted faces can only share a contorted kind of love. Grumpy and grouchy faces can only share a grumpy and grouchy type of love. Self-centered and self-absorbed faces can only share a self-centered and self-absorbed type of love. A, a, A sour face can only share sour love. A begrudged face can only share begrudged love. In other words, the expressions on our faces reflect our present state of being and whether the presence of the Lord is manifest in us or not. In John chapter 8, verse 12, it says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, most people think that all you need to do is believe in Jesus. Most folks believe, they say, all I got to do is believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus, right? And then they go off and who they are and the way they live and what they do has no reflection on Jesus at all. 
But they think that because they know how to spell the name and call on the name that somehow that they are preserved because they know how to spell and call on the name. But that's not the case. That's not the case. And I think that very often people get it mixed up and render Jesus into some type of superstitious equation. Because the reality here is not only do you call on the name, but can you walk like he walked? Can you talk like he talked? Can you act like he acted? Can you live in faith like he tried to teach us to live in faith? You know, it's not so much a matter of calling on Jesus, but are you able to do Jesus? And so Jesus was about trying to teach us how to do him, teach us how to walk like him, teach us how to love like him, teach us how to show compassion that he showed, teach us how to be merciful like he has been merciful. In other words, we are being called to accentuate and to manifest the teachings of Jesus. Because all of the teachings of Jesus had to do with bringing love into the world. Treating our neighbors with dignity and respect. Loving as we would want to be loved. Be kind to the stranger. And caring even for those that the world has no care for. This is the light of Christ. This is walking in the light of Christ. This is carrying in us the reflection of God. Do people see God? Reflected in you? Do people see Jesus in you? Do people see the light of God in who you are and how you act, how you walk, and what you do? Is the reflection of God upon you, and does the reflection of the divine upon you illumine the community and the world? How does your face look? How does your face, I'm not talking about the makeup on your face and whether the ruse is right and the mascara is put on correctly. And I'm not talking about whether your beard is trimmed right or your mustache is clipped. But how is your face? When I look at your face, can I see the reflection of God? When I look at you, do I, do I know that you have been in the presence of God? You see, Moses was in the presence of God, right? Do, do, do you really exude God's love, God's hope, God's life, and God's light? Do I know that you have been in the presence of the Lord? Now, somebody, I want you to look at your neighbor. Look at their face and look at their eyes. Good. Do you see the reflection of God in them? Do you see the reflection of the Lord in their face, in their eyes? Do you see the light of God in their face and in their eyes? And if you don't see that reflection, what about you can you give off to put that reflection in them? Continence. Continence, yes. <laughs> do, 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 do you look at your neighbor? You know, when I think about it, just think about it. How many people go through the world like this, right? Making it clear, you don't want to talk to nobody, you don't want to see nobody, you don't have any relationship with anybody, just going through the world filled with all of your self-centered hostility. You see, to have the light of God upon you and in you you know you got to break that barrier you got to say and call somebody back to their humanity you got to call somebody back to being able to rejoice in God I have this ritual every time I go out on the demonstration and the police are out there I go and I introduce myself by name to the police we live in the same community Isn't that, am I right but police got a job to do. I got a job to do. There ain't no hostility, but the humanity. And see, what happens when you introduce yourself and say, hello, I'm Grayland Hagelin. I ask folks for their name, and they tell me their name. All of a sudden, the barrier that has separated us is gone. Now, I always got somebody where I walk up and I say, hello, I'm Reverend Grayland Hagelin. And somebody standing there like this. And I, and I finally go, I said, what is your name? I said, I'm just saying hello. I'm just saying good morning. Good morning. 
right? In other words, trying to get somebody to break out of that space that they're in and make connection with another human being because we are all human beings under the love and care of God. You see, what I'm getting at is that there's so many places, and a lot of you know this, where, where we sort of in this camp versus this camp, right? And I'm in this camp, and you're over in that camp, and I can't talk to you, and somehow I can't identify the humanity in you. Somehow I can't share the light of God in me or see the light of God in you. And see, what we're called to be as the people of faith, as the people of God, is to allow our light to shine. Allow our light to shine. And where light does not exist, to call that light forward. Because when light steps in the midst of darkness, darkness cannot withstand the hint of light. For light drives away the darkness. If you take just a little candle and bring it into a room that's dark, all of a sudden that darkness begins to flee into the corners because God is light. Is there light in your face? Can somebody see that you are a child of God? Can somebody see that you belong to God? Can somebody see that you were in the presence of God? Can somebody see the God holiness in you? Reflection of God in you. Share that light with your neighbor. Let somebody know just how good God is. Let somebody know that you've been in God's presence. Amen. <laughs> Doors of the church are open. I pray somebody here may have heard a word. Somebody may want to come and present themselves to Jesus today, ask for a relationship. Somebody may want to join the church, make this church your home. The doors of the church are open. Our arms are open. Let the light so shine in the midst of the world. Let us stand together. Let us join in the singing of our invitation. What are you doing? What's your name, my brother? Danielle. Danielle? Uh Uh-huh. You want to join? Praise the Lord. She's going to take some notes, but I'm going to pray for you for a second. Lord, we just thank you for Donnell coming forward. Lord, we just ask that you just fill this brother with your hope, your power, your joy, your love. Lord, fill him with your presence, Lord. Allow the light of God to be seen upon his face and in his being, Lord. We just thank you for allowing this brother to come forth and respond to your word this day. Lord, we ask that you baptize him in his heart and his spirit and his mind. We give you thanks today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Brother, sister, take a night. Coming forth for prayer. Lord, we just thank you for miles today, Lord. We just ask that you continue to lift this brother up and you strengthen him. We thank you for the light in his face, the joy in his heart. We thank you for his playfulness and joy, Lord, and the wonders in which he grows by. Lord, just continue to surround him, protect him, and hold him in your grace and your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Give me a hand. Amen. is the light, light of the world. Jesus is the light, light of the world. Amen. We have uh, Brother Darnell. We can fill that out in a minute. What's your last name? Wade. Wade? Yes. W-A-D-E. This is Brother Darnell Wade has come forth to express <laughs> an intention to unite with the church. And we are just so thankful for you coming forth for allowing your spirit to be moved by God's spirit. Amen. And we're just going to pray that God's spirit will continue to surround you Amen. and will continue to hold you in his grace. Because life's sometimes not easy. Amen? Amen. All right. And we need a Savior. (laughs) You know, we need a Savior for the rough battles in life. There's always going to be something, but 
in God, we got the power to go through it. Hold on and go through it. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a man to be our prayer partner, be Brother Darnell's prayer partner today. Is there somebody I can call on to be that? Some brother somewhere? Don't be shy. Amen. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. And who do I see up in the balcony there? Amen. The brother Smith? Come on down here. Amen. Amen. Ian, Ian Smith. Ian thought that he could be on the last row in the balcony of the church and I wouldn't see him. <laughs> Amen. So we just wanted to have you team up with somebody in prayer that you can send a note to through email or phone call, that type of thing. And this is Brother Ian Smith. Ian, thank you. Ian, Ian is one of those financial rising stars, and uh, we're going to be looking forward to him doing some seminars here at Plymouth Church. Amen? Amen. He grew up here, too, so we, 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 we love this brother. So let us join in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for Darnell coming forth. We thank you for Ian being his prayer partner. Lord, we just ask that you bless both of them. Allow them to find ways in which to pray for one another, to lift up each other, to allow their light to shine, to be a reflection of God. We lift them up to you, Lord, and we ask that you surround them and keep them in your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The deacons will be in touch with you and they'll bring you back for orientation. Okay. All right. Go over there and finish filling this out. Mm -hmm. Amen. And as we prepare to adjourn from our worship this day, we're just going to pray that God's light will be in you. The holy and divine light will emanate from you. That people might see the reflection of your goodness and your holiness. And that you might be able to share the peace and the love of God, the creator, with somebody. Allow your light to shine forth in the world. We pray this prayer in the name of the creator, the son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And the people of God said amen. Amen, amen. amen and amen.